All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we have the top seven changes of patch 1.1.0. This is a huge patch. There's a lot of changes. Uh, there's a lot of miscellaneous changes as well, a lot of small changes, a lot of overhauls to a lot of systems that we are going to talk about. But uh, I just want to let you know, link down below to the full patch notes. Also, in this video, I'm going to go over the top seven, in my opinion, and also I'm going to uh, list off a couple more changes that I think are significant enough to mention in the video. Again, these are not all the changes. And also, if you want to see more videos on this patch and Bannerlord in general, uh, after this video is uploaded, I'm probably going to be uploading, I don't know, probably like a dozen videos showing off new features in this patch, how they work, how to do them, and, uh, you know, giving you a little helpful hand. But without further ado, let's do it. Top seven. Alrighty, starting off at number one, we have party screen troop sorting. I love my sorting. I love to keep be organized. So uh, now players can now sort both rosters in the party screen by troop type, name, count, and tier. The last selected troop uh, sort type is remembered and applied on every party screen initialization. By default, heroes are grouped together at the top of the roster. This change also includes a troop type rundown added to the party screen. Players can now see how many infantry, ca uh, archers, cavalry, and horse archers they have at a glance. Sensational, amazing. I love these changes. I include it in the top seven. It could have been miscellaneous, but again, I love these type of changes. Next, number two, implemented a fog of war feature for heroes. Players now need to meet heroes to unlock some of their critical information. Skills, traits, family, and own settlement information are hidden until you meet the hero. This change affects tooltips, portraits, and information shown in the encyclopedia. There it is. It's a fog of war feature. Um, I don't know if I completely agree with it 100%. I'll be honest with you. I wasn't a big fan when this was announced. This was announced uh, a couple months ago. Not the biggest fan. Um, hopefully in the future they make it a toggable feature where you can uh, turn it on and off. But uh, I get the concept. It makes sense. Uh, why not, right? Next, added new tutorials to help new players. There it is, baby. Uh, pretty much stealing my job, but it's okay. Uh, includes tutorials for upgrading troops, choosing perks, distributing attributes and focus points, getting companions, ransoming prisoners, civilian equipment, party speed, army cohesion, creating an army, pretty much every single thing. Well, not every single thing in the game, but a lot of stuff that you're going to do a lot of times in the game. Uh, continuing order of battle, crafting and crafting orders, banner, item in the inventory, crime, assigning roles in the uh, clan screen, and raiding villages. Also improve some of the existing tutorial trigger conditions and text. Cool. Uh, like I said a long time ago, and like I will keep saying, um, one thing that uh, Crusader Kings does a lot better than Bannerlord, or, or, or pretty much Bannerlord, Warband, whatever you want to call it, is they're very good at explaining everything in the game. And I think um, we need a lot more of this uh, tutorials and just pretty much uh, tool tips for everything in the game. I think it makes sense. It's a sandbox game. People should know how all these things work so they can use them together. You know what I mean? How all these features work so they can use them together. I think that's good. Next, implemented the Sally Out Ambush Mission. So this is another thing that you can now do, kind of like the keep battles, prison break. This is another thing added to the game. Players can now initiate this mission to destroy the besiegers' AI siege engines. There you go. So if you are the defender, um, which, you know, it doesn't happen often, but if you are the defender, uh, you can actually do a sally out mission and destroy their um, siege engines. I'll make a video about this once I get, you know, uh, into the patch and really play some games and actually get into the part where it's, uh, duh, you know what I mean? An actual defensive situation, which is going to be hard to, uh, you know, get going. But I will get that video out as soon as possible. Next, they added a new settlement near Lagetta named The Retreat, in which the player can approach a new NPC, The Hermit. And decide to retire from their current campaign, either moving on with one of their heirs or concluding their journey completely. This was surprising. This was never talked about, uh, as far as I know. And, uh, pretty cool. It's a cool little feature. You know what I mean? Just, if you want to just end the game right there. Just, you know, I've had enough. Let me just end it off. Pretty cool. Now, uh, I actually, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about, I kind of, like, put this as, like, one uh, with this the retreat and the hermit like this is kind of like the same change in my opinion Well, not the same change, but they kind of go together, right? So continuing this um, new feature we can end the campaign They added a new window where players can see their progress through their campaign at the end of it Presenting many stats just kill count play play time number of troops recruited uh, Etc players can now reach this window when their clan is destroyed They decide to retire or when they complete the main storyline 
there it is so you will see the screen uh, regardless of what you choose but i think that's kind of why they gave you this option to kind of like retire a campaign so this screen is actually shown more often than pretty much whenever you decide to you know what i mean finish a campaign which can take a very very long time so it makes sense uh that's why i kind of want to put them two together okay uh next we're down to our last two by the way this is number six ally Mc i said ally uh alley mechanics have been redesigned and implemented from now on players will be able to uh claim alleys after they clear one what are alleys these are little um well if you don't know what alley is well in the game these alleys are places in towns where you can find uh bandits and you can start a fight with the bandits before you could just start the fight with the bandits you defeated the bandits and pretty much you got like some uh if i'm not mistaken you get reputation um the town likes you more like the town's owner likes you more and stuff of that nature right uh and obviously the bandit uh the bandit uh crime like you know the main guy in that town doesn't like you because you obviously you know beat up some of his uh guys but that's pretty much what used to happen now uh you can clear them and claim them uh they can uh, what's it called they can do so by hold on from now on, players will be able to claim alley, alleys after they clear one. They can do so by assigning a clan member who can who has suitable traits and roguery skills. There you go. So now you can actually assign an, a clan member to do uh, more things than just run a caravan. They can run an alley, which is, I think, pretty, pretty cool. And obviously, if they have a high roguery, they probably do a better job. Uh, Player-owned alleys will provide gold and bandit troops for the player, but also generate some crime rating. There you go. So if you are going to become a criminal, this is the way to go. If you don't want to become a criminal, this is probably not something you want to do because it will increase your crime rating. Alleys will be attacked by neighboring gang leaders, and players will have to respond to these attacks in order to keep the alley. I wonder how this works late game. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, can you uh, realistically own a... Um... It just depends how quick they attack. We're going to have to see how quick they attack and kind of how that works. Because I feel like, or if you can actually send uh, companions to kind of go deal with that issue. We're going to see exactly how that works, but um, it's a cool little feature. Again, we got the Sally mission. In, uh, what's it called? We got the Sally mission. The retreat was added. And these, uh, uh, this ally, oh, what's it called? I keep saying ally. But uh, alley mechanics are added as well. Kind of, I'm going to say crime mechanics, right? Pretty cool. Very good. Now, lastly, is actually a very big change as well. So the village rage system has been reworked, including, um, oh wait, wait, no, I'm not including. Instead of rewarding just uh, through the inventory and recruitment pool of the village, village raids now primarily rely on the amount of hearth damage done to the village during the raid. So the more damage you do, the more mu uh, the more stuff you get. Uh, rewards come in three categories. First is dinars, which make a small part of the reward. Then they have uh, various everyday goods, kind of like products. You got wood, you got like... I'm guessing you'll, you'll get some food. You'll probably still get livestock, stuff of that nature. And then the main production of the village. Oh, my mistake. Uh, so so various everyday goods, kind of like just random goods. And then the main production of the village. So if it's like um, a grain uh, village, you're going to get a lot of grain. You're going to get some livestock because, you know, most grain villages, they also have livestock. If it's like a, a, a village that does primarily... What, what can I say? Primarily, let's say uh, we got a village that... Uh, it's another village. The horse villages are going to give you horses. Uh, the, wood uh, the wood villages are going to give you uh, wood. Fishing villages are going to give you fish, etc., etc., etc. Then the combined value of this loot is usually higher um, than, for example, attacking caravans, but the weight can be rather high. Okay, so it's like a different thing. So attacking caravans, you are going to get less money, but it won't be as heavy. But if you attack the, uh, if you raid the village. It's going to be kind of heavy, especially while raiding villages that produce low value but high volume of goods like hardwood and grain. We want to increase the viability of raiding, but at, if done, this is the dev speaking, by the way. We want to increase the viability of raiding, but if done for a commercial game, we want players to return to towns and sell loot off. This way, players can either go raid a village, maybe two, and leave the front lines to make money, or choose to go on a raiding spree for strategic reasons and forgo the income. There it is. You have your choices. Again, good. Uh, recovery time for villages has also been increased. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it that exactly. I think that means that um, recovery time for has also been increased. So that means they're going to be out of commission for more. I don't think that's a positive. I think that's a negative. But it sounds like a positive. Um, or no, recovery time for villages has increased. Okay, it's written really weirdly. Um, 
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, something has been increased. It's, it's either going to take longer or it's going to take shorter. Listen, it is what it is. Next, forcing supplies and recruits are now also based on village hearths. Okay, so based on how big the village is, the more stuff you will get if you force them to give you supplies and recruits. After being forced to give supplies or recruits, the village will generate less loot through raiding for a while as villagers are alert. Interesting. So you can't just push them to give you extra stuff and then raid them on top of that. That is something that um, most people that raided villages used to do because you'll pretty much get more loot that way, almost 100%. Now that is not the case. And then lastly, if a raid is completed successfully, it does not give a disorganized state anymore. You only become disorganized when you leave mid-raid. This is actually pretty, pretty good. It's a good little change. Why? Because disorganized, pretty much anything you do in the world, you'll become disorganized for a couple of in-game hours. Pretty much means you are slowed down for a little bit because you're trying to get organized again so you can keep moving. But um, if you want to go raiding, if you are successful in raiding uh, the village all the way to the end, you will not be disorganized. You can run away quick. I think it's a good change. Now, those are my top seven. Let's go through them one more time. Party screen troop sorting. I think it's very good. Always love sorting. Fog of War feature. Not a big fan. Added new tutorials. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, Sally out uh, ambush missions. Great. Uh, the new settlements with the retreat and the hermit. Great. Which also comes with the uh, screen that shows you all the stuff once you complete a campaign. I think it's very good. Uh, alley uh, uh, mechanics. Crime mechanics. You know, you control your little parts of the town. I think is great. I love it. And then the village race system being reworked, I think is a very, very good change. All the changes I pretty much agree on. Now, uh, let's quickly go over small changes uh, that I also want to talk about. First, Wanderer life cycle was changed. Um, players can now find at least one of each Wanderer type in the world at all times. What does this mean? Uh, now, um, companions in your world, they will be much more balanced and you will see pretty much every single different type of companion so you can recruit uh, the one that you actually want. So it won't be random. It will still be random, but the, it's, it's going to be try. It's going to try. The system's going to try to make it as even as possible, which is I think is good. Next, troop selection was added for keep battles. Keep battles used to not have troop selection. Now it does. Cool. Kind of like the same way that the hideouts do. Now keep battles have them as well. Next, we have two big overhauls. So first, there was a huge perk overhaul. So many perks were changed. Like on like in terms of like what they did they changed the descriptions they changed the names of a lot of perks so uh yeah go check those out there's a lot of them and uh, again go check the patch notes if you want to know exactly which perks they do list off all the perks next we have huge quest changes and improvements as well pretty much a lot of them were changed a lot of uh, uh values and stuff were changed a lot of rewards were changed again check the link down below in the description and lastly they increased the base settlement prisoner limit for uh to 60 from 30 and bonus from each wall to 30 from 10. So now places can hold a lot more prisoners. This was an issue a lot of people were having where prisoners were always kind of like filled to the brink in most towns, especially during wartime. Now you have more prisoner space. That pretty much does it. Top seven. Very, uh, very, very good patch. I think uh, there's so much to cover and I have so many videos that are going to come out uh, in the next upcoming days. Glad that we actually got something new for me to work on, to focus on and, uh, to give to you guys. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.